everybody. My name is Shauna, and this is the American English Podcast. My goal here is to teach you the English spoken in the United States. Through common expressions, pronunciation tips, and interesting cultural snippets or stories, I hope to keep this fun, useful, and interesting. Let's do it. Welcome back to the American English Podcast. In today's episode, we'll be talking about another expression. We've been doing a lot of these recently, and they're fun because there are two parts. In today's episode, you'll hear about the expression bells and whistles, which is a common expression in American English. You'll also hear a joke and some pronunciation exercises. In part two, which I try and keep related to the expression, we're going to be learning about the popular Christmas song, Jingle Bells. I'll tell you the story about where it came from, and then we'll go through the lyrics so that you can learn some new English vocabulary. Stay tuned for part two. The story of Jingle Bells is short, unexpectedly interesting, and it sets the mood for the holidays. Are you in the mood for the holiday season? By holiday season, I'm referring to all of the secular and non-secular holidays in December. So Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and Christmas, to even New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, right, on December 31st and the 1st of January. In my area of California, it already feels pretty festive. Colorful lights are being strung or hung around town. Decorations are being put up, like wreaths and bows. Trees are being bought. Gifts are being sought. (laughs) Um, In other words, searched after. And just this week, I went to the store and bought an advent calendar. Do you know what an advent calendar is? It's a special calendar that allows you to count the days until Christmas. And what's great about it is that each day comes with a treat. So either a sweet, a small gift, or a task. Advent calendars were originally from Germany. They were invented in the 20th century. And in recent years, they've become popular in the United States. You can find them at many grocery stores, uh, convenience stores, just any sort of store, actually. And they're normally large, flat boxes with Christmas images on one side and little doors for each day so that you can open them and pull out a chocolate or candy. Some advent calendars are more elaborate than others. I've seen some that are made of cloth or wood. I've even seen banners that people hang up on their walls uh, each day with a specific hanging number and something inside of that. So it's like a pocket. The point is, this is all new for us. And I have some questions about it. For those of you who did grow up with advent calendars, what did you do when there was more than one kid in a family? Does each child get an advent calendar? Do you split the chocolate or candy inside between two kids? Like cut it in half with a knife? I find it very confusing. (laughs) Let me know on Instagram at American English Podcast. Today, as usual, we're going to start with a joke. Are you ready? Why is it getting harder to find advent calendars? Do you know? Their days are numbered. (laughs) In English, we say that days are numbered when there is a limited number of days. Time is running up. Maybe you're running out of time to do something that you hoped to accomplish. The days are numbered. Here, of course, it's more difficult to find advent calendars the longer you wait, because after Christmas, they no longer serve a purpose. You won't use it in January, so their days are numbered. Literally, a calendar has numbered days. 
right? One, two, three, four, five, up until, you know, (laughs) however many days are in a month, are written on the front of a calendar. That's where the humor comes in. Let's hear it one more time. Why is it getting harder to find Advent calendars? Their days are numbered. (laughs) All right, so the closer you get to Christmas, the fewer Advent calendars you'll find, and the days on a calendar are literally numbered. (laughs) All right, go ahead and share that with one of your friends. Let's move on to the expression for today, which is bells and whistles. We'll first learn the definitions of the individual words. Bells. Bells are cup-shaped metal objects that make a clear ringing or jingling sound when shaken, struck, or rung. Yesterday, the school bell rang at 3 p.m. Pay attention to the different forms here, especially with ring, right? In the past, ring is rang, and the past participle is rung, right? Ring, rang, rung. I've rung a bell before. I rang one last week. And is a conjunction that allows you to connect words, clauses, and more. We often use and in lists. Don't forget to buy mashed potatoes and gravy, right? Don't want to miss out on the gravy if you're going to have some mashed potatoes. That's the thick, rich brown sauce we normally put on top of them. Whistles. A whistle is a small instrument that, when blown, makes a high-pitched noise. A referee at a soccer game blows his whistle when he wants the players to stop playing. So when we say bells and whistles, we're referring to non-essential features, possibly fancy features, things you don't need in order for something to work properly. For example, my dad had a flip phone for as long as they sold them. Do you remember flip phones? They opened and shut You could kind of dramatically answer calls and dramatically hang up. Anyway, um, for the longest time, my mom and I tried to convince my dad to get a smartphone. He only wanted to use his flip phone. He'd say, oh, no, I don't need all those bells and whistles. He meant, I don't need all those non-essential features. I don't need those apps. I don't need all of the functionality of a smartphone. He only used his phone for texting and calling. He didn't need all the bells and whistles. Now he likes it, of course. But back then, he didn't feel that those features were necessary. According to Grammarist, the expression bells and whistles was used in speech long before it was found in writing. And so its origin is uncertain. Many people believe it came from many bell and whistle sounds on trains, which to a passenger might seem unnecessary. Why do they keep ringing bells and blowing whistles? Others say it came from the well-decorated organs in early circus settings and at fairs that looked like they were literally covered in bells and whistles. The point is, bells and whistles are non-essential features, things that not everybody needs. Let's go through some more examples of this expression in normal everyday contexts. After hearing these, I guarantee you won't forget this expression. Example number one. Back when I was a kid, years ago, my parents bought a state-of-the-art sound system for our living room. It had a CD player that fit 12 discs and the functionality to do a thousand things. I can't even remember most of them, but I think you could change the bass frequencies, the pitch. That thing had so many knobs and switches, it looked like a rocket ship. (laughs) When I reflect on that sound system, all I can think is, what human needed all those bells and whistles? Who used all those fancy features? I don't know. Example number two. 
Imagine that you want to get into video editing, but you've never done it before. Then one day, you decide to buy the best software on the market. After purchasing, you open up the software and immediately feel overwhelmed. It looks like software intended for a professional video editor for Hollywood films. On the screen, there are a thousand different options for visual effects, and you don't need all the bells and whistles. In other words, you don't need all the features it offers. They're non-essential for you. All you need is good quality videos, not the bells and whistles. Example number three. A few weeks ago, Lucas decided it was time to get a new car. Our old car was breaking down. It didn't work as well as when we bought it. And he's always wanted an electric car. So we got a Tesla. He ordered it just as you'd order an Amazon package with just a few clicks on an app. And then it was dropped off in front of our house. Not kidding. Lucas received a text, your car has arrived. And sure enough, it was waiting outside. Nobody was there to sign a paper. It was super weird. Um, this is besides the point. Since then, Lucas's friends have come over and asked me how we like the new car. I usually respond, yeah, Lucas likes all the bells and whistles. I could care less. In other words, Lucas is enthusiastic about all the features of the car, and I'm not. For example, he loves the touchscreen with video games on there and streaming services, the customizable horn. I don't need all those bells and whistles. Which, by the way, did you guys know that you could change the sound of a Tesla's car horn so that when you honk, it sounds like a goat, a fart, or even the song La Cucaracha? Those are just some of the options. It's entirely customizable, which is just really weird <laughs> and wild if you think about it. For me, that's totally unnecessary, kind of funny, whatever. Um, I hope the expression bells and whistles makes sense now. When I hear bells and whistles, I immediately think of fancy features in software, technological devices, and cars that I don't use. So I tend to use this expression in the negative. I don't need the bells and whistles. However, if you do like fancy features on stuff, you can always say, I love all the bells and whistles. Yeah, my new phone, oh, I love all the bells and whistles. To each his own. Use it as you please. Let's move on to the pronunciation exercise. We're going to use the phrase, I love all the bells and whistles. Repeat after me. I. I love. I love all the bells and whistles. I love all the bells and whistles. And the conjugation. Repeat after me. I don't need the bells and whistles. You don't need the bells and whistles. She doesn't need the bells and whistles. He doesn't need the bells and whistles. It doesn't need the bells and whistles. We don't need the bells and whistles. They don't need the bells and whistles. Notice how and sounds like in, in, bells in, bells and whistles, bells and whistles. This is one of the most common reductions in American English. Instead of saying the full word and, we reduce it to in, in. Repeat after me. I love to eat apples and bananas. I love to eat apples in bananas. Repeat after me. I love the movie Thelma and Luis. I love the movie 
Thelma and Luis. All right, good job. That's it for the first part of this two-part episode. Be sure to stay tuned for part two if you want to learn all about the story of Jingle Bells and its lyrics. Hope you're having a nice day, and until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the American English Podcast. Remember, it's my goal here to not only help you improve your listening comprehension, but to show you how to speak like someone from the States. If you want to receive the full transcript for this episode, or you just want to support this podcast, make sure to sign up to premium content on AmericanEnglishPodcast.com. Thanks and hope to see you soon.